Hello everybody. So today I'm going to demonstrate the electrolysis of water using a very simple apparatus. So we have got two pencils sharpened at both the ends. Then we have a glass of water. Then we require a cardboard and we need to make two holes through which the pencils can go inside. And we require a nine volt battery. The battery is connected with the leads of the pencil. Now this black wire is connected to negative terminal of the battery. So this is the cathode and the red wire is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. So this pencil is the anode. Now, as you can see that pure water is a bad conductor of electricity. So I have added some good amount of salt inside this and you can see the bubbles have started to come out. There are large number of bubbles coming out from here. That means these bubbles are of the hydrogen gas and very less number of bubbles are coming out from here. Please don't look at the bubbles which I have settled on the graphite, but the bubbles which are coming up, rising up, they are very, very small and hardly visible, but less number are coming up. You can see over here, but it is very much visible that large number of the bubbles are coming out from here. So this is the hydrogen gas and this is the oxygen gas. So hydrogen gas is emitted at the cathode and the oxygen gas is collected at the anode. So very simple setup as you can see by yourself. Volume of hydrogen and the oxygen coming out is 2 is to 1. So let's try to understand that. So now after seeing the demonstration, let us learn about the equations that are related to the electrolysis of water. So we know that pure water is a bad conductor of electricity. It will not allow the electric current to pass. So we add some amount of salt and instead of salt, you can also use dilute acids. So we can also use sulfuric acid or any other acids. Now what happens is guys, when you add any ionic compound salts or acids, they break down into their respective ions. Water weakens the ionic bond between the ions and ions they separate out. Now there are free ions inside the water. So water becomes good conductor, right? So that's why we have to add some amount of salt or any dilute acid. But make sure that otherwise this H2SO4 is not going to be a part of reaction or the salt that you add remains as it is. It will not be the part of the reaction and I will show you that. Okay, so this is our anode connected with the positive terminal of the battery. We generally use platinum or graphite rods. Graphite is ideally not required for very high level experiments because graphite is carbon. So when, when you break down hydrogen and oxygen, when you break down water into hydrogen and oxygen, the oxygen reacts slowly with the carbon and converts into carbon dioxide. So we can use platinum over there, but for school demonstrations, that's perfectly fine, right? Ideally, we carry out this electrolysis of water in a specialized container called Hoffman's voltameter. So here, this is our positive anode. This is negative cathode. This is acidulated water, electrolyte, right? And we are going to perform the electrolysis of water. So when you pass the electric current, the current flows through the entire circuit like this and water gets reduced. So let us see what happens to water. Water breaks down into HOH. Always remember guys, you have to write water as HOH. OH is hydroxide ion minus one. This is hydrogen positive one ion. So anyhow, it is H2O only. So H2O can be written as HOH. So H2SO4 can also be written as when you pass electric current or the moment you add acids into water, the acid breaks down into hydrogen ions and sulfate SO4 minus 2 ion. But there are two atoms of hydrogen. So you will basically get two hydrogen ions and one sulfate ion. Now, there are one, there is going to be one hydrogen ion and one hydroxide ion when one water molecule breaks up when you pass the electric current, correct? Now, inside, inside this water, so now we have H plus ion 
and OH minus ion as well as these two as well. But as I said that I will show that these two are not going to be the part of the reaction. So if one water molecule breaks, I will get 1H plus ion and 1 OH minus ion. Now I know that H plus ion is positive so it will go to the cathode and OH minus is negative so it is going to go towards anode. Right guys? So this OH minus ion will gather at anode so whatever happens to OH minus ion it is happening at cathode. So under the reaction at cathode I am going to mention OH minus 1 and whatever happens to H plus 1 ion it happens at cathode because this positive ion is going to get gathered at cathode because negative is going to pull the positive. So H plus ion is going to wait here for something to happen. Now always remember people that the negative ion will lose electron, positive ion will gain electron and always remember at anode oxidation takes place and at cathode reduction takes place. So OH minus ion is going to lose one electron to form OH and this one electron which is being lost by OH minus ion it is being taken up by anode then this positive terminal is going to pull that electron that electron will be transferred here and this H plus ion which got sticked itself to the cathode is going to gain that electron and it will convert itself into hydrogen atom. This means that it has got one electron less. So when it get, gets one electron the number of electrons and protons become equal and the atom becomes neutral. Always remember the direction of electric current is opposite to the flow of electrons. So the electron is going to flow in the external circuit like this. So in the external circuit electric current would flow like this. Now this is due to the breaking up of one water molecule. So in such a way four water molecules are going to break up. So I am going to write the reactions for the same. Four water molecules will break up into four H plus ions and four OH minus ion. This is one water molecule. So now four water molecules break up. So now I am going to multiply this side and this side by 4. So ideally you are supposed to show the reaction. So 4 water molecules in total break up. So I am going to multiply this by 4. So 4, 4, 4 OH, 4, 4 over here 4. Now this 4 OH, this is OH, OH, OH. OH four times. Now as you can see that this is H2O. So H2O again two hydrogen and one oxygen. So again H2O but as you can see that this one and this oxygen are left. So O plus O it will form O2. So finally four OH will form two water molecules and one molecule of oxygen gas would be released and as you can see that oxygen would be released at cat, uh, sorry anode and over here 4H so H H H H so two hydrogen will combine together to form H2 these two will form H2 so finally you will get two hydrogen molecules over here so this hydrogen gas would be emitted at cathode so you will see that more larger number of bubbles will be emitted at the cathode and this will be the hydrogen gas and oxygen gas you will see less number of bubbles emitted at anode. So the ratio of hydrogen and oxygen by volume would be 2 is to 1 and even if you are not able to see the connections of the battery you can just identify that larger the number of bubbles coming that is always hydrogen gas and that has to be cathode. Just remember cathode always reduction takes place no matter wherever you are studying this in chemistry and at anode always oxidation takes place. And as you can see that even H2SO4 breaks up this two hydrogen ions and one sulfate ion remain inside the solution. So this 2H plus ion remains as it is because when four water molecules break we get this 
and they are converting into gas over here hydrogen and oxygen so these two are still there inside the solution so the h2so4 after the reaction gets over doesn't get used up so guys hopefully i have cleared your vision about the electrolysis please post your valuable comments and thank you for watching the video